In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can create professional looking thumbnails like this, this, or this very, very simply in Photoshop 2022 or even beyond, right? So hope you're going to enjoy and let's get straight into it. So once you open Photoshop, this is similarly what you are going to be greeted with. I have some previous projects down here, but ignore that. So what you first want to do is click on this right here where it says new file. And here you are going to need to set the resolution for your project. So for YouTube thumbnails, I like to use 1920 by 1080 pixels and YouTube actually only uses a bit smaller than that. So this is full HD resolution and YouTube only uses uh, 720p for the thumbnails but I still like to at least edit them in this and then YouTube can just convert it to a lower resolution one right I already have this set here so I'm just going to click on create and boom as you can see now we have this new slate project right here so the first thing I like to do is just add a thumbnail face into the project I already have a folder where I have some thumbnail images of me uh, but if you don't have uh, images like this then what you can maybe do is stand next to a white wall and then just shoot some pictures of yourself making all sorts of different faces and you can use those for your thumbnails in the future so you don't have to just recreate the thumbnail every single time you are creating a new video I think it's a really useful tip to save a lot of time as you can see this is already a PNG picture which means that the background is transparent but if you let's just say you shot this with a, a wall behind you that's a solid color one really cool thing that you can do is uh, go here on this tool which is the quick selection tool and then click on select subject and it's basically automatically going to detect you as a person and your arms and and all sorts of things about you and uh, select it for you so um, you can see your selection by pressing Q on your keyboard and basically everything that's not red is uh, selected and everything that's red is not selected. If you want to change anything about this selection, you can click here on the brush tool and with the white brush, you can add more things to your selection and with the red brush, you can remove things from your selection, okay? And you can change the uh, brush size and everything and it works the same way. Now, um, if you need to zoom into your image a bit more, you can either like press uh, command or control on your keyboard depending on whether you're using a Mac or a Windows computer and uh, zoom into your image that way or you can use your trackpad to zoom into it as well and you can make really nice and small adjustments with your brush now after you have selected your subject you want to press Q again and as you can see uh, it added the things that we wanted it to add into the selection and then you can click on your move tool and then uh, press common C and then common V on your picture. And as you can see, it has uh, selected you and now you don't have a background either, even if you shot it with a background, okay? Once I have my person uh, on the thumbnail, what I like to do is kind of position it in a way that's appealing. So you want to usually have like nice and clearly visible faces on your thumbnails because people usually click on things that show emotion. So that's why you see all the YouTubers making the crazy faces on their thumbnails, right? And a, a cool little feature that I like to do to my images is um, add, go, you want to right click on the layer here. That's basically yourself or the person you are making the thumbnail for and then double click on it uh, or sorry, right click on it. And then you want to go to blending options. And as you can see here, you can add a bunch of different kind of effects to your uh, image. But what I like to do is add an outer glow to my image and uh, you can make that whatever color you want to. Uh, maybe you can make it red. And I also like to add a drop shadow to my image. So this just adds it a little more, more um, nice, you know, separation from the background. And um, in my opinion, it just looks cool. So you can add that and you can adjust all the different settings of your drop shadow and the outer glow in this uh, panel area, right? So as you can see, it looks a bit weird uh, at, in my hair area, kind of. So what you can always just do is uh, click the eraser tool and then uh, you want to just make it a bit smaller, maybe a bit harder. And uh, that's way you can kind of cut back the access that was maybe left in the selection part. Um, so you can make it look all nice and smooth. Once I have this, I usually like to add some text to my uh, images. 
and my thumbnails. So what you want to do after this is click right here on the create new layer thing. And as you can see, I have created a new layer. Um, and then you want to go to the text tool and uh, the horizontal type tool. And you want to type in whatever text you are trying to add to your image, right? So in this case, I might uh, put in how to create, and then I'm going to make it a bit uh, bigger and I'm going to use a different font. One font that I really like to use for thumbnails is Babas Noya. I think that's how you say it, I'm not sure. And um, now, as you can see, I have this text here and uh, I can actually duplicate this text or any layer, uh, as a matter of fact, by simply selecting the layer here and pressing Common J on my keyboard or Control J if you're using a Windows computer. And as you can see now, I have these two uh, different layers here and the second one I'm going to change to thumbnails. So now I have this nice little uh, text here. I can change the color of the text right here. I can change the size of the text and I can also change like how wide the letters are apart from each other right here on this tab. Uh, so you can do a ton of different um, things with it. One little design thing that I like to add to my thumbnails a lot of times is to add a colored background uh, and kind of like a box be behind the text. So what you want to do is create new layer again and uh, pull it like under the text. And then uh, you want to go to the rectangle tool and you want to select the color with what you want to use for the background of the text. And then I just usually draw a nice little rectangle around my text. And as you can see, uh, this kind of made it uh, like pop a lot more. So this is just one cool little design uh, that you can use. You want to make your text in this example pop even more. You can go to, in this case, the thumbnails text and then click on bl blending options. And then you want to go to outer glow and maybe make it white. And um, I can maybe change the spread of it, uh, the size of it as well. This is not going to be my favorite design ever, but I'm just trying to show you guys how you can use different techniques in Photoshop to create all sorts of different things, right? So yeah, you can play around with this. Uh, you can, if you decide not to use an effect, you can just hide it here and um, you can use all of these things to add and uh, remove things from your thumbnail. Now, one thing you might want to do is add um, like an icon to your thumbnails or a picture of something. So what you want to do is go to Google and then type in whatever you're searching for and then you want to add PNG to it. And um, it just makes your life easier if you don't have to cut out the certain thing that you're trying to add to your thumbnail yourself. And just try to find something that has uh, this little um, background with the rectangles because that means that it is a PNG or an SVG file which you can add to your project. So you just want to download that and drag and drop it to your project like this. And as you can see, I can just easily add this uh, logo here. And um, now I have that there, right? Uh, if you want to change like what's in top of what, uh, for example, if I want to make myself um, to be on top of all these different texts, then uh, I can just move that to the top. And as you can see now, it's kind of behind me. And if I want to add like a nice little shadow to that logo, I can do that here in the blending options part. Let's say I also want to have a nice little background to this whole image. So uh, you can either create a background yourself with all the different tools that are inside Photoshop. Like I like to use the gradient tool a lot. So you can just, uh, you know, put in whatever color you are trying to make the gradient and, um, and just use that to create maybe something like this, where half of the image is darker than the other half or has a certain color added to it. You can also use different kinds of gradients. So they have the linear one, the radial one, angle one um, and so on. So if I wanted to add like a little bit of glow behind me, I can just use this radial one. And as you can see, I can create that nice little glow effect kind of um, behind me. 
Now, I also like to create backgrounds that are more kind of like realistic looking. So if you want to do something like that, you can search for something like uh, interiors, like house interiors. So I'm just gonna search for something like light house interior design. And as you can see, you can find a bunch of cool looking uh, designs. So I'm just gonna download this one, for example, and add it to my image. So as you can see, I have added it there. And uh, now I need to make sure that it's on the bottom. So it's behind everything. And uh, I like to add some blur to it. So you want to go up to the top, go to filter, and then you want to go to blur. I like the Gaussian blur and the motion blur effects quite a lot. And then uh, you can change how much you want the background to be blurred. Maybe you want to just kind of use it as like a pattern. Um, so you can make it really blurry in that case. And you can also change the opacity of the background here. So this way it just kind of breaks up the uh, all whiteness of the image. You can, uh, if there is too much color in the background for you, you can go here uh, to the adjustments tab and go to vibrance. And then you can bring down the saturation. So it's just black and white background, uh, but still kind of add something extra to it. Uh, so it's not super plain. To sum it up, uh, basically now you know how to use the text tool and how you can add different effects to it with the blending options tab. Uh, now you know how you can add different icons and images of things into your thumbnail and how you can move them around. Uh, by the way, you can do that by pressing uh, control or command and T on your keyboard. And this way you can move it around. You can rotate it and do all sorts of things that you want to do with it. Um, now you know how you can add yourself into the thumbnail and also cut yourself out of the background. Um, so that way it's uh, transparent behind that. Um, you know how to add an outer glow to it. You know how to add the drop shadow to it. So I think with these simple skills, you can really start creating some uh, better looking thumbnails than you have previously known. In this video, I didn't want to go super into the details of thumbnail creation, but if you want to see a video like that, then comment down below and I'm going to make a more advanced thumbnail creation video as well for you guys in Photoshop. So hope you found this video valuable and useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content similar to this. I really appreciate you watching until the end and I will hopefully see you in the next one.